Hello and uh, welcome to Global Sports Care. I'm delighted today to speak with uh, Dr. John Tanner. Uh, John has been the president uh, of the Vasco Sledel Society of the UK. And John, um, would you mind introducing yourself, what your interests are and what you're up to at the moment? Yes, uh, thank you, Marcus. Uh, I've been practicing musculoskeletal medicine, sports medicine, for uh, over 30 years now. And uh, as you say, I have uh, been teaching a lot for the British Institute of Musculoskeletal Medicine, and more recently uh, for the British Association of Sports and Exercise Medicine in relation to the care of the injured sportsman and in fact, any patient with musculoskeletal pain. I have a private clinic uh, in Chichester in West Sussex, and there we do a range of treatments for uh, anyone really with musculoskeletal pain, a sports person or otherwise. And the main aim is to try and keep people mobile because uh, we believe that mobility is the key to a long life. And um, I think I took you as a partner to speak uh, about the subject because you have a particular interest in prolotherapy and I think the first question which comes up um, when you speak about prolotherapy, what is prolotherapy? A good question. Um, it's not very well known. And I think the best way is to, the answer is really in the name. Prolo means to proliferate. It's short for proliferation. Um, so therapy is obviously a treatment to proliferate. Now, what are we proliferating with a treatment? Basically, collagen in the soft tissues like the ligaments. Uh, basically our joints all over the body are kept in place and held together by various forms of collagen tissue, whether it's ligaments, capsules or other structures. And of course, tendons and muscles are also made of collagen as well as the intervertebral disc. So lots of uh, this connective tissue and these structures are made from collagen and the prolotherapy treatment is a treatment delivered to specific tissues, depending on where the problem is, to cause proliferation of collagen formation and in a sense, therefore, to regenerate tissue within that damaged or overstrained tissue. The solution we use is an organic solution. Uh, most people now use dextrose, just a more concentrated form than is found naturally in your body. So it could be anything from 12 to 25% dextrose, and that acts as an irritant in the tissue and creates local inflammation. Some people use it with a little bit of phenol, which is a stronger irritant, um, and that's mixed with anesthetic and sometimes with a bit of glycerol as well depending on the solution you use and which country uh, you're from. But the most widely practiced therapy is with purely with hypertonic dextrose. And that is, as, a, as you know, an organic solution. And it works by simply creating a reaction in the tissue. And following that, the body itself uh, does the rest. And um, on a structural level, you already started uh, telling us about how it works. So, yeah, well, by um, basically by encouraging the formation of collagen tissue, renewing that tissue, and over a, a period of a number of treatments, you get a cumulative effect, which basically leads to a stronger tissue joining uh, two bones together or across a joint. And that can take up to three or four months to get that full restoration of strength and that collagen formation uh, sound and firm. And we just spoke about, you've done this for 40 years now, and um, I think there's quite a bit of history behind this treatment. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, it, I, I wasn't the first person to use it. I learned it from uh, several of uh, my teachers who had picked it up, in fact, from American, their American counterparts. And the modern prolotherapy really started in the late 50s. Uh, a surgeon there uh, who was having to treat a lot of people with musculoskeletal pain 
who weren't amenable to any kind of surgical solution. They'd been involved in car accidents or industrial accidents. And he experimented with various solutions to find how he could treat their, their pain by injecting the ligaments. So this man, Hackett, developed the treatment, published it, and gradually it gained favor in the States. And then some of my English uh, predecessors started to use it. And um, they taught successors like myself. And so we've been using it since the 80s with a solution. It has never really got established in the NHS in any great way uh, because it was brought over from the American osteopaths to the UK and got into uh, practice with orthopedic uh, and sports physicians back in the 60s and 70s. And so it's really only been practiced by a minority of people. The situation has changed a bit more recently in the sports medicine world. And, um, you know, when we speak about what do you use it for, you know, what, what uh, are common indications you would use prolotherapy? Well, well um, that could be used really for any area in the body where there are ligaments, but the most common are the back, the posterior pelvis, the sacroiliac joints. You have the ankle, or lateral, the lateral ligaments of the ankle, certain ligaments in the shoulder, even the wrist. It can be used for uh, muscle attachments around the elbow, as in tennis elbow or golfer's elbow. And I've also used it uh, quite a lot in the cervical spine, in the neck, for the ligaments there. Uh, the advantage really, the reason why it's been taken up quite avidly by the sports medicine world recently is because um, it's not a steroid, it's not cortisone. Um, we have never really had much in our armament apart from exercise and rest and training um, for these sort of pains, except for corticosteroid. But corticosteroid hasn't really got a very good press. It's brilliant for reducing pain in the short to medium term, but we know that it does cause weakening and deterioration in the long term of these collagenous structures and even inside the joint. So we could, we've only got really a limited opportunity with corticosteroid. And this solution, prolotherapy treatment, has really fills a gap because it's not a steroid, doesn't cause any of those side effects. And it does strengthen the tissue. So um, it's used to strengthen tissues in those regions I've mentioned. And um, that's probably the reason also why we're hearing more and more about prolotherapy. But, but what about the research behind prolotherapy? Uh, recently, um, I was reading more about knee osteoarthritis um, yes. or um, any, anything you, you particularly uh, want to mention. Well, there's a, body, a growing body of evidence on uh, the treatment of peripheral joints, including knee osteoarthritis, uh, shoulder pain, um, groin pain, uh, everything from Osgood Schlatter's disease to um, uh, lateral ligament pain and Achilles tendinosis. Um, and in many ways, it seems to be um, as popular as PRP, platelet-rich plasma the treatment of these conditions. It's easier to do the research on um, a peripheral joint problem like knee osteoarthritis than it is to do it on the back. But most of the studies which have been done, because back pain, lumbar pain is such a big problem, there's been a number of studies done on lumbar pain over the last 25 years. But really the jury is still out as to just how effective it is as um, a treatment for lumbar pain. And the problem here is that, um, of course, there are lots of different causes for pain in the back. And in these studies, they haven't really sorted out what the specific uh, problem is in the back. It's just been used as a blanket treatment. So you can't really um, apply a blanket treatment, expect to get very good results. So we need more research in areas like the spine on better defined areas, like, for example, uh, chronic sacroiliac ligamentous strain or posterior pelvic girdle pain, uh, which is an area which I would like to research further, because I think it has a, a, a great potential benefit in that area.
And um, is there, you know, often there's the question, how many of those injections do I need? Is there a number you would propose which you have to have? Or, um, you know, is, is there anything um, of advice or research? You just inject a little bit at a time, maybe half a mil of a solution at each end of the ligament. And you may do several ligaments in one tree. You repeat that um, every uh, week or two, or you can space it out longer if you want just to get an accumulative action on the tissue. And so you could do three or four um, to start with, see what the result is two or three months later. And then uh, you could um, decide to do a few more if necessary or stop there because they've already got uh, 80 to 90% uh, benefit in terms of pain relief. And is there any so, specific um, rehabilitation or um... You know, obviously, we uh, you, you work closely with physiotherapists. Um, is there anything which needs to be looked for after they have the injections? Uh, there's always a bit of soreness afterwards because it works by creating inflammation. But after that subsided, um, people can really carry on as normal. You don't have to rest or take special precautions. The only thing we advise is not to take anti-inflammatory medication because you don't want to that would be counterproductive to the way it works. Um, so there's otherwise no particular precautions, but we often do combine it with advice on specific exercises for the problem which would help. Because of course, stability of a joint depends not just on ligaments, but also on good muscle control. So we don't neglect that area as well. And obviously, you know, we're speaking about that the evidence has been growing over the years. But it's still, um, for my part, you know, as you know, I work in London and in, in, in Zurich, in, in Switzerland, there are not many practitioners doing prolotherapy and in, in the UK, it's also not widely used. What is the reason behind that, do you think? Um, historical, partly because it, it never got that um, established within mainstream NHS practice due to the, the route by whence it came from America into mostly private practice in London in orthopedic medicine back in the 60s. Um, in the early days, they experimented with some very vigorous uh, proliferant solutions, but they were a bit toxic to nerves and they had one or two nasty mishaps with patients. Um, and that actually cast a bit of a, uh, you know, a, a, a black cloud over the treatment back in, in America in the 60s. So it never really became widespread in, May, in, in hospital practice there either. Um, so it's um, here in this country, uh, I think now that we have uh, the modern um, bar of, uh, high bar to reach of good evidence base before you do a treatment, the thing is it is a needle intervention and um, it does cost uh, money and training and expertise to do it. And without the evidence, really good evidence on, say, the back or, say, coriliac joint, it won't be accepted in NHS practice. I think it could be different in Switzerland or other countries, um, but we do need to develop this. And uh, I have been trying for some years now to set up some research studies on this, and hopefully we will achieve, achieve that by getting some funding in the in future. Good. So um, overall, you would say uh, prolotherapy is a treatment people should consider for musculoskeletal pain in specific indications? Yes, I would. Um, I've done um, audits of the work we've done in our clinic uh, over the years, and our results um, have actually slowly gone up from about 75% success to up to even 92% over uh, successive years. And it's all about selecting the right patients. So the ideal people to start with, I would say, are those uh, mobile women who have quite loose ligaments or lax ligaments, who maybe have had trouble during pregnancy, um, but it hasn't uh, firmed up after childbirth. So they're struggling with pain in the sacroiliac joint, say a year or so after having had the baby. Um, and those ones usually respond very well to injecting sacroiliac ligaments. And the ones uh, 
it could be of either gender, male or female, but with in their 20s, 30s or 40s with this recurrent low back pain episodes, acute, sometimes with a little bit of sciatic radiation, but often just back pain or hip pain or groin pain emanating from the lumbar spine related to disc degeneration. Uh, that can also work very well by simply injecting the uh, supporting ligaments of the posterior uh, vertebra, which is the, uh, the interspinous ligaments and the facet capsules and the ilia lumbar ligament, um, all the ligaments you can reach safely from a posterior approach. And so those are the two uh, groups in the lower back I would target particularly uh, as being uh, most likely to respond. And so it's encouraging when you get started. And the other ones, people with uh, just first degree or mild second degree lateral ligament sprains of the ankle, they respond beautifully. Um, and certainly if you've got somebody with not too advanced knee osteoarthritis, you will get good results with that if you follow the right protocol. Um, whiplash strain of the neck, uh, just to mention a few, really. Yeah. Well, I think um, this gave us a nice overview of, of, for prolotherapy. So I, I want to thank you for, for your time this evening uh, to speak about prolotherapy and um, um, all the best. Thank you very much. Been a pleasure. Thank you, Marcus. <laughs>